this is a short talk I gave at UCC in June of this year as part of the Digital Humanities Association conference. And I was on a panel with three other people. This is what the title of our panel talks was, OM from Ireland and the UK, Open Science and Fair Methods for Early Medieval Epigraphic Sources. And the other panelists were Florian Thierry, he's from the University of Mainz in Germany. He's a surveyor. Nora White, who is from the Department of Early Irish at Maynooth University. Megan Kasten from the Celtic and Gaelic Department at the University of Glasgow. And then there was me, who's not an academic. And the talks were OM in 3D+, plus, which some of you which are into OM stones might have heard about, the OM in 3D project. Uh, so there were two talks about that by Nora and Megan. And then there was a talk by Florian about OM and linked open data. And another talk by Flo, which was OM in Open Science Community Hubs and the Citizen Sciences Wikidata. Those were not recorded as far as I'm aware, but I was afraid that none of this would be recorded, which is not very open. So I just recorded it with my phone, which is not great quality. So I gave the last talk, which was OM Stones on OpenStreetMap. And I'll just have the audio and show you the slide. So it's almost like if you've been there. So enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Anna Distel. I'm also from Germany, but I live in Kilkenny. Um, I'm like a honorary Irish person now. I'm not an academic. I have an MA in uh, English and German linguistics and literature. Didn't do me much good, but um, <laughs> my day job now is I'm a musician. Well, it's really more a night job, but you know. Um, and I am a, a volunteer mapper with OpenStreetMap. It's mostly volunteer mappers with OpenStreetMap. I actually meant to ask who here has heard of OpenStreetMap. That is not too bad. Um, <laughs> I've seen worse. Um, I'll still, I'll still say a few things about it. Um, it was a grass, it is a grassroots movement that was started in 2004 in London by Steve Coast. I always have trouble remembering his name, but something water related. And his first name is Steve. Um, it's a geo database. It has often been compared to Wikipedia, but it's, I think it's much better actually. Um, and it's, I think it's also used by a lot more people without them knowing. Um, it's open data and open source. And it's, despite its name, OpenStreetMap, it's a lot more than just streets. And it's a machine and room, human readable. And it's also lots of fun, I think. Um, so how does the tagging of ohm stones work? I think I started mapping ohm stones on OpenStreetMap in 2021. And it's all, ideally, you document what you come up with at some point on wiki.openstreetmap.org. The main key, it's always a key and a value, and the combination is called a tag. Um, the main key is historic and the value is ohm stone. The historic group is probably the most controversial of them because we are all citizen science and very few of us are archaeologists or historians. Um, so it's kind of, you know, make it up as you go along kind of a way. Um, unfortunately, they're not rendered on the OMS Carto style, which is the map style you see there, if you can see it. It's a bit bright. But it's what you see when you go to openstreetmap.org if you want to do that now on your phone. Um, they're not rendered because they're just not important enough. And there's just, sorry, <laughs> um, you know, compared to streets and shops and stuff like that, because there's only, we will see that later. I think when I made this presentation, there were about 73 on OpenStreetMap. Um, there are now 25 more um, because we mapped the ones outside. And the Coventry one wasn't on it when I prepared the presentation. But it, if you compare that to the number of shops that are out there or the number of, let's say, let's say defibrillators, there's a lot more defibrillators mapped on OpenStreetMap and they're not even rendered on the OMS card site, even though they're a lot more important. You will agree on that. I hope. Um, <laughs> and, but I had, in, I had designed this icon there, um, just in case it would happen someday. It probably won't because not even ring forts have their own icon and they're over 12,000 mapped. Um, so, you know. Um, that's the trouble with the worldwide community. You have to choose your priorities. So this is, these are some of the tags you can use for mapping ohm stones. Um, 
some of them have a name. It's kind of usually made up of the townland plus Ormstone. And if the townland has more than one, then you have numbers behind as well. Um, we can add the inscription, which is done in the Ohm characters, usually, um, which is the Unicode set. Then we can have a translation of the inscription, the inscription in Latin characters, and again in Ohm. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I didn't develop it all by myself, obviously, because I'm not an expert on Ohm. Um, we can add a Wikipedia link, Wikidata, and so on. I won't go through all of them because it's a lot. Some of them are national monuments. Um, that's also a key I introduced to OpenStreetMap, the REF IE NM. So reference Ireland and NM for national monument. Um, last year, I mapped all the national monuments that are confined as an open data source. It's not as easy. The National Mon Monument Service is not very cooperative, I have to say. Um, and there are a lot more that are in use that aren't even documented, like indoor, yes, for the ones in, museum, in museums, like the ones outside here. Um, the URL Sketchfab, um, which I think I have added to the wiki now. Um, so when I go on, on site, um, I do try to do the photogrammetry and upload it to Sketchfab. And now that I've learned about 3D Hop, I'll probably implement that as well. Um, and it is open source, so anything goes. Um, if you can come up with more um, ideas to add to it, the more the better. Um, so photogrammetry, that you, I think most of you are familiar with it by now, <laughs> if you weren't when you arrived here yesterday. I started this, um, I used to work in a museum in Kilkenny called Rose House. It's, it's an old merchant's house. And someone did a workshop with us, with the Kilkenny Archaeological Society some years ago. Um, Gary Dempsey, some of you might know him. Um, he did a workshop, but it was all with the DSR, uh, what's the camera called? A proper camera, not a phone anyway. And, and lots of, um, processing on the computer. And most of the people taking part, because it's the Kilkenny Archaeological Society, were over 60. So we kind of knew that wouldn't go anywhere really. Um, but I just became interested in it again last year and I searched for apps. Um, to use and I tried out a couple and two of them didn't work at all for me and then I tried Kiri Engine and it worked like a charm and full disclosure I'm an ambassador for their app now so um, they gave me free pro um, account for three months and you just take a lot of pictures from as many angles as you can which in the corridor is not always possible some of them are very tall and I'm not um, and then also <laughs> You can't go behind the stones, unfortunately. Um, but the OM tends to be in the front. That's the way they are displayed. Um, and it's very quick. So I, I, we did that yesterday. I, I call, it, call it scanning because doing photogrammetry is just too long. Um, so I scanned 10 and I think Flo scanned 17. And six are already on Sketchfab, um, you know, after after the last night. Um, <laughs> I still managed to upload three, but I don't drink. So, you know. Um, <laughs> It was fairly easy for me. Um, there are also iPhone apps, I'm told, or I found online that use a combination. Well, they claim they use a combination of photo and LiDAR, but Megan says it's not really LiDAR. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't have an iPhone. And what I put here on the last point is that I would prefer an open source platform because you can't really link stuff on Sketchfab as much as I would like to. But I have to look into 3D Hop and hope that's better. So there's an example here. We've already seen some um, in Flo's talk. The Aragland Ohm Stone, that's the one from the Wikipedia, from the wiki page. So it has a name. So the, the table is in alphabetical order. It's not hierarchical or anything. So it starts with the alternative name, which is Brandon Monument, apparently. The heritage level is two. I think in Ireland, we only have two heritage levels. One would be um, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which Ohm stones aren't. Um, and then two is anything else that's recorded on the Historic Environment Viewer. Then we have the, the main key, the inscription, and so on and so forth. And this also is a national monument. This is the description in the Historic Environment Viewer, um, which is, is human readable, I suppose. <laughs> I was trying, when I 
scanned the ones yesterday, I just, as a name, I just used the number they have here because I haven't learned by heart what the McAllister number is. I'm not that much of a geek. But um, I try to find out that when I put them onto SketchUp, I wanted to have it all interlinked and add all that. And I had to go to um, the Historic Environment Viewer, and they're all in one dot. So you have to click on the one dot and then go through 29 entries because it's not just the ohm stones, there's also the cross inscribed stone, I think. So 29 entries, and you have to scan the text for McAllister and then look for the number that's in brackets behind. And of course, once you've you're done with one, you can't just, you know, take it off. You have to go through them all again for the next one. Um, so that was a bit annoying. If they had that in a more tabular format, that would be much nicer. And also, yeah, so these are the ones that are, when I prepared the presentations, um, this was, these were the ones that were mapped on OpenStreetMap. Um, as I said, there are 26 more now with the one in Coventry and the ones out in the corridor because Flo had mapped three of them already. The reason why there's such a low number is that we have to actually go to the location to find the information because the um, OpenStreetMap is the open database license and the Historic Environment Viewer is, uh, what's it called, CCBY4. Um, so we can't import that data and also we can't trust their locations <laughs> in, in some cases. Um, we're not quite sure if they do that on purpose because some of the things are portable that they don't give the right location or if they just don't really know what they're doing. Could be a mix of both, of course. And also there was some issue last year with the historic environment viewer and the data isn't up to date really since then. So that's also a bit of a problem. But I, I, I am aware that we're only, only citizen science, scientists and uh, we can't really do the, the the real science on OpenStreetMap because we're only amateurs, even though we're very passionate about it, maybe even more than the professionals. But, you know, it's a good reason, as Flo said, to travel around the country and go to these sites and take the pictures and do the scans and everything because this will be, you know, the most precise location at least. Um, I think that's everything, yes. Um, and a database is only as good as the data you put into it, which I'm sure you will all agree. <laughs> so get mapping. Um, and not just ohm stones, the fibrillators are very important to map too, but I've done the one outside, so you don't have to do that. Go a minute, Mark. And as a result of having been to Cork and having met these three wonderful people, we did photogrammetry of all the ohm stones in the stone corridor at UCC. And I think Flo went on to scan the one in the public museum. And we measured some of them and we had a, a really close look at all of them again. And I've updated some of the wiki data entries. All the UCC ohm stones are on OpenStreetMap now in a lot of detail. And you can find the photogrammetry models that I made on my Sketchfab channel. I will add a link in the description. I'm not sure if Florian has put his up online yet. And I'm also not entirely sure if Megan added more scans to their project, but it will take a lot more time for them to do it because they have professional tools. It takes a lot more time than if you do it with Kiri like I did, where it took me probably five minutes, 10 minutes to scan each stone and then another maybe 10 minutes to upload them and the processing is done in the background. So I had the first three up on Sketchfab the first evening. That is fairly quick. So you can have a look at that on my Sketchfab channel and you can search for the OM stones using Overpass Turbo and have them displayed. Thanks very much for watching. Slangeful.